Well, 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 what do we have here? We've got ourselves a nice, gemmy piece of Cooperpedia white opal. It's fairly small, it's 8.7 carats in its fully, fully rough form. And you can see that it's got every color and a lot of red and we love to see it. We love to see a bit of red. The most prized color in opal. Now it's a fairly thick piece as well. If we get ourselves some measure rolls, we're looking at, we can see that it's about a quarter of an inch for the American viewers. And about seven mil for the Australian and well, is it everywhere else that uses it and the Americans are just special? I think so. And then we're more beyond half an inch there. I don't actually know what that line after half inch is in American. But it's about 15 mils wide at its widest point there and this point doesn't mean much that it's this large but there you go, it's almost three quarters or the glare is giving me a hard time, 17 and a half mil. Now I say that that part isn't so important because that massive point there that's giving it an extra couple mils, that's probably going to have to come off. We don't like our opals to have sharp edges or sharp points. Even if you're going to do like a teardrop pendant, you still want to round that. So a lot of that's going to come off. In terms of how we're going to get it to face, I mean, there's colour in every direction. But because the chipping has come from this side and it's exposed the colour bar there, we're going to treat this as the top and this as the bottom. Most likely, anyway. What we'll first do is go around the edge in those areas that I can't quite see what's going on. But I don't really think I need to be able to see what's going on too much. It's just color all the way through. This is one of the pieces from a previous Jenny and Shane parcel that I've reviewed on the channel. So you might be able to pick which one it was from if you've got a better memory than me and you've seen the video. But yeah, for in terms of beginner quality stuff, this is at that higher end of the beginner range. It takes a little bit of experience to get it cut and not stuff it up, but it's not that, not that difficult really. Cooperpedia is so much more consistent than Black Opal. You can actually get away with making some silly decisions a lot of the time. But let's not make any. We've set out the game plan and we're going to go for it. So diamond bit only for a tiny bit. So we're just going to take off that ugly outer crust with the diamond. And then we're going to switch straight to Novas. We're just going to shape it with the diamond a little bit around the edges. Take off that tiny bit of outer crust. Might just scrape off the bottom because we've got a lot of thickness there. But apart from that, it's going to be Nova tips and they're going to give this a nice shine and then finish it off with cerium oxide as long as there's no sand that destroys the whole stone. But I'm not expecting there to be a lot of sand in this one. I'm expecting this one to be pretty good. Which means there's going to be a lot of sand. So, wish me luck. Let's get to carving.
So we've had a little bit of a play with it already. And I've let it dry out so that you can see exactly what's wrong. You can see the sections that haven't been touched by the diamond bit. They, they remain clear, but then everything else is frosted over. Drying out is really important. I can't even stress it enough. It really highlights any kind of imperfection or inclusion you've got in the surface. And the issues that I'm having at the moment are not so much these bits of sand, but this one here in particular was concerning me. So I've stopped. Every now and then you need to restudy the stone when things don't go your way. And if I turn on this little lamp, you can start to see that those pieces of sand on the top, they're not that bad. But the one down here towards the bottom, if I can get a reasonable angle, that one is actually going in pretty deep. Let's do this. There you go. There you can see it. So you can see that kind of greyish section. That's all that sand. So it goes in another mil, maybe mil and a half. Quite a severe sandbar. So that means we've got to reassess what's going on here. The top ones, not worried about. Those are just superficial. I can get rid of those pretty quickly. The diamond bit will get rid of those. But this, the question is whether we take it all the way in to about there and see what we've got left. Or we do a really weird freeform shape where I cut into that. Because there is, every part of this stone now is basically pure colour. We can hit it with some water now that we've had a look at it dry. And look at that. It is just pure colour, so much red. So much of everything really. I can't complain about this stone at all. For this to come in a beginner's parcel is really good. If you see anything like this turn up in your beginner's parcel, it means that someone might not have sorted their stones correctly. In this case, it was just Jenny and Shane helping me out when I first really started getting into Opal. And this was one of the first pieces that I got from them, or in one of the first parcels anyway. So, they've given me an absolute stunner here. Probably better than every other stone I've got in the rest of that parcel by far. But, it's still a tricky one. So, some decisions have to be made. Looking at the back, because we don't want this kind of bit here, and the sand is here. I am starting to see the chance of cutting these bits off and getting a nice little cab out of that out of that section. But at the same time, look at that colour on the corner there. Oh, this is one thing that I really struggle with and that I really need to get better with is making these kind of decisions on what to cut. You see Justin on Black Opal Direct, he'll have a 10 grand stone and he will just say, yep, that needs to go, and then he'll just grind that all the way back in. And then all of that's gone. And he'd probably settle for a nice little small round stone here. But me, it hurts me far too much to lose that amount of colour. It's not even about the carrot weight, it's just about the colour. I just love the look of a naturally carved opal. Well, not naturally carved, naturally shaped. So I think what I'll do is I'll take this back off because I just kind of want to see what's under there. I mean, you've got a hint there. It's going to be nothing but colour. And then I think we're just going to tunnel away at the sand and I'm going to bring this in a little bit because this is a little bit weak over here. I'm just going to bring this in to get rid of that and we might end up with a weird, weird little shape or if we really have to, I might end up going for like a little bit of a pear shape over here. So, back to the diamond bit.
Well, we have good news and we have bad news. So the piece, I've gotten pretty much everything out of it, but once it's dry, you can see a few extra little bits. There's another little bit in there. There's still another little sand spot there. The rest of it's pretty clean. The good news is that it's tidied up pretty well. It's incredibly bright, incredibly colorful. Like this is probably one of the brighter pieces that I've cut. Out of all the stuff that I've cut. It's right up there. I've cut a couple similar Kubipedes, but this one has just an incredible coverage. Not a single dull spot on it, it's just this pure bright flashy red blue green. So it's an amazing piece. The bad part is, look how far I've had to go in there to get rid of that sand. So it was actually about two mils deep. So my fingernails need a cut, I'll get the Dremel onto that later, but that's two maybe three mils deep because that goes even further in on the inside there and I don't like how it looks basically and we're always cutting in terms of how it looks especially in the carving world so what I'm actually gonna do and I don't think I've done this on the channel yet I'm not too sure but what I'm gonna do is actually slice that off because I just hate losing anything so I don't want to just grind this all away with the diamond bit I actually want to keep that and I'll try to think of something to do with it at some point. With wire wrapping I'm sure I can use little chips and stuff here and there. And then we'll be left with this which is an incredible stone on this side and on this side. There's a little bit of fogginess still towards here but I could just get through that and I bet you anything it would be just as good as this side. Incredibly bright. And just because of this dip over here, I am actually thinking that this side might be the better side. But it's still a really thick piece, so we don't have any huge issues. But this is this is where we're at. I'm actually going to now cut through. And when we're cutting with the Dremel, it's incredibly painful and incredibly slow. And you have to do it slow, otherwise you're going to have accidents. And what you're using is not something like this. This is basically a wood wood saw. You're also not using a metal, a metal bit that might come with it, but you're actually going to want to get yourself one of these. Actually, you can buy them in like 20 packs. But what it is, is just like those diamond coated bits we're using to grind away at the opal width, this is a diamond coated circular disc. With a couple nice little holes. The holes are pretty good. They don't nick your opal or anything like that. But they do help keep everything cool and get the water in there. So what we're basically going to do is just cut along that line. And we're going to end up with those two pieces. It's not really going to focus all that well. But it's going to leave those two pieces. So that sand infested section. Even though we've carved it away. It's like a massive cavity in a tooth. We're just going to cut it off. We're going to cut it off, we'll save that for something in the future and we're going to get ourselves one really nice stone here. So I'll go through the cutting process. All you'll be seeing is a lot of slow going. I'm constantly just going to be passing over the top. And you can cheat and go from the other side if you think you're going to be able to line it up perfectly and then just snap it in half. But in this case, I really don't want to make any mistakes. So I'm just going to go from the one side and you'll just see me passing over it. And I don't know, we might even be able to count how many passes it takes, but I'm going to guess a lot. So yeah, and then we'll probably stop the video after that because this is dragging on a bit. There's been a lot of thinking involved in this piece, which is nice. It's nice. So, yeah, let's get to it.
Well, I'd say that was successful. It didn't take very long, we were only going through a small little piece. The thicker it is and the longer the cut, the exponentially longer it gets. So you can see there that there's the little bit that remained. All I had to do was tap from the other side rather than actually cut through because I'd worked all the way through pretty much from one side, which has its pros and cons. The good thing is that it means that you can't miss your line and you can't misconnect the two. The bad thing is, and it happened at one point, and I'm surprised it only happened at one point, but it happened at one point where you're in so deep, a slight misalignment of your blade will cause you to catch and it'll throw your blade out. It wasn't too severe, but it's always something that's a bit risky. You know, if you use a chainsaw or a circular saw or an angle grinder, you're a little bit scared of that kind of thing, but with a tiny little dremel bit, it's not too bad. I haven't actually hit myself with that spinning disc before, but I wonder if it would actually cause any significant damage. I don't think so. It's just like the diamond bits. But yeah, there's our cut, there's our two pieces. So we've got an incredibly beautiful piece here. This is it dry. When you can see the colour starting to flash through when the piece is dry and hit with a coarse grit, you know that you've got absolute quality. And there's the little off cut. They've both got incredible colour. I'll wet the off cut first. So you can see there, the sand doesn't continue any further, so that was that was good. We've drilled right to the end of it. I've accidentally taken out one of the spots that I needed to get rid of. There's another one down there. But yeah, that's a nice little nice little chip. Tiny bit of texture line there. So I basically nailed that texture line. Which is always perfect. And yeah, here's the here's the main piece, our prized our prized piece. It is incredibly colourful and look at that. Even in the guts, there's still way more red deep down in there. So that slight cloudiness that you can see there, I'm gonna carve through that I reckon with the diamond bit. Though actually at this point I'll just leave it for the Nova tips and we'll start the next video with the classic black 280 grip and we'll work through. I love that my finger's just covering up a bright little spot of blue. But yeah, it's quite a piece. It's spectacular to find something like this. If you get a beginner's parcel and it's got a piece like this, even if it's only eight carats or so like this one was, you're still over the moon. The entire parcel costs 200 and this might cut a nice little, at this point, probably going to be a nice five carat stone. It's around that B4, B5 kind of mark on the brightness scale. And the body tone's just a classic Cooper PD white, so it's a little bit grey, but not enough to call it grey. It's just an off-white. But yeah, we will continue on with this one in a future video. It'll actually just be the next video most likely, unless I space it out with something, but yeah, it's... I'm too excited to let this sit on a desk for too long. I'll probably start working on that next video now and keep recording. So it's definitely on its way. Subscribe if you haven't already and you'll see it. No worries. I'll catch you in the next one.